Hello, everybody. It's the interview queen, Alicia Atu here, and I am super, super psyched to have Eric Young on the show. Hello and welcome. Hey, how are you? Uh, the only person that uh, the quarantine made you busier, like you're, you're stuck inside. Right. So you're like, oh, I'm just going to interview everybody. And I somehow I'm made trying. it to the list. You did. I'm very glad. I've wanted to have you on for quite some time. So now we are here. How are you doing and how are you holding up with everything going on? Yeah, I'm doing good. Um, you, you always think like, oh, you know, it would be awesome to not work and just stay home and watch TV and have nothing to do. Uh, this is a, a eye-opening experience for me uh, and for most people. It's awful. Uh, <laughs> it's really boring. Uh, I'm trying to get to the end of Netflix. I'm pretty close. I might be able to finish that up by the end of the day. Uh, I've seen everything on there, like all of the shows even though they put another 31 up, I think, on Tuesday. So, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm bored. I mean, it's not hard. Uh, it's necessary, you know, stay in, stay away from people if you can, uh, because I, I want to go back to work and <laughs> I want people to, to go back to work and have jobs. You know, it, it, it's, it's been very easy for me, but I know that this is, uh, it's hard for a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people have definitely taken that hit. And it's interesting because I feel like Netflix or any streaming service really has been that void for so many people because you literally have no choice but just to sit on your butt and do nothing. So what were some of those shows you were diving into recently? Uh, I ripped through Ozarks and Tiger King over the last couple of days. Um, I went, I'm uh, almost done Mayans the first season. Uh, okay. I never, I didn't get a chance to watch that. I love Sons of Anarchy. Um, so I'm watching the first season of Mayans. Uh, you name it, I've watched it. It's uh, it's scary. I have them all. I have Amazon. I have Disney. I have Hulu. I have Netflix. Got them all. And now I'm thinking about Apple TV because it's got different shows. So all right, you need it. something so, else. Yeah, it's crazy. At first, when you said you were almost towards the end of Netflix, I was like, oh, what show's called The End? And then I literally, two <laughs> seconds later, it switched in my brain. I'm like, oh, he means he's actually almost watched everything on there. <laughs> yeah, it's, good. it's getting real close. Well, one thing I do want to dive into, of course, is some wrestling, because we know you for some amazing runs, both in TNA, on the independents, WWE. Uh, but I was curious, if we were to go back to the first match you have, because I love these stories so much, how did yeah. it go down? And was it a good match? Or was it one that you kind of had to, you know, make your way through? Yeah, uh, so uh, I don't, I'm really bad at this stuff. Like, fans will put videos up online or or I'll be talking to one of them online or something like, oh, do you remember in 2009 and you wrestled, you know, uh, Petey Williams at this pay-per-view? I don't remember, I mean, to be honest. And I, it's not that, uh, not, it's not important to me. It's just, I just, I lose, I lose it, you know, I mean, somehow. And I think part of it is because I've been doing it for a long time. I've been on, well, on television true. now for almost almost 17 years uh i've been wrestling for over 20 years which is crazy to say um but yeah so i uh my first match was in benton harbor michigan i couldn't tell you where any of the other ones took place but the first one you always remember your first i say that it was uh, in benton harbor michigan um and it was a dan severin promoted show and they did uh half wrestling matches pro wrestling matches and then the other half were tough guy contests where like truck drivers would come out of the crowd and put boxing gloves on and fight each other so oh. <laughs> it, it, yeah it was a wild experience this is 1998 so like the internet exists but not really you know like i'm a i'm a broke independent wrestler living on my own for the first time like i don't own a phone like i don't have gps i don't like getting there was an experience it's on the very far side of michigan uh i worked with one of my best friends at the time aaron wood uh he's still wrestling under super k in ontario right now uh, I don't know if you've ever crossed paths with him, but but super good guy, crazy good athlete, uh, could do anything. And we were the first match, the opening match of the show. And we did, I mean, you know, everyone has those guys that, like, you can just kind of do everything. So we did. And uh, the match went really well. Uh, we got to practice it a little bit. Like, you know, like, talk about it a whole bunch on the whole ride. And, uh, you know, being, you know, your first match, you want it to be perfect. So we went over it and over it and over it. And, and uh, it was awesome. It, I, I remember it. Uh, I was the, I was a heel and he was a baby face and he won with a 450 splash. And the place went crazy. It was a pretty good crowd, 2,500 people. But uh, I will never forget uh, watching the Tough Guy contest. One of the wrestlers actually entered it. He wrestled his match and then he just stayed in the ring. And then a guy came out of the crowd and he fought that guy and beat him. 
Then he beat another guy and then beat the guy that won the first fight and, and won the whole thing, won like 500 bucks or something like that. So um, if you've ever seen uh, outer shape people that don't fight, fight, it's pretty pathetic, but uh, it's something that I'll remember forever for sure. Hey, at least it's quality entertainment, right? <laughs> yeah. And at that time, I was uh, I was the director, Eric Young. That, that, was, that was my heel persona. That didn't last very long. It was only a couple years. I was the director, Eric Young, from like end of 1990. 7, 98 to like 90, halfway through 99, probably 2000. Are there any gimmicks or personas or even gear when you look back on it, you just think to yourself like, why did I do that? Or why did I look that way back then? Or do you actually look back and you're like, oh, things were actually pretty smooth for me? No, yeah. I, so my very first singlet was, I mean, when you're living in, I was living in Cambridge, Ontario. And like, I mean, like you said, like the internet existed, but not how it is today. Like you can't just type in wrestling gear and then 40 websites pop up and they can, you know, take your digital measurements and then send it through the mail and it's there a day later. Like that didn't exist. You know I mean? I'm not like, oh, these kids these days, I'm not being like that. I'm just saying it was different. You mean like it's it was way different. So we actually uh, just through driving to work, I saw, uh, it was like this, uh, in a grocery store, it was a, an advertisement for a woman that made figure skating outfits. I'm like, well, figure skating outfits are made out of spandex. Yeah. So I called her and I told her, like, oh, this is what I'm looking for. Do you think you could do it? And she said, well, I don't know. I've never done it. I mean, I can sew and I have all the, the material. So anyways, me and like four or five other guys that, that I, I worked around the area went over there and, uh, she made it. It was, the gear was good, but like her lettering was terrible. It looked like a five-year-old drew it. And it was like, the director was all crooked on the back of my trunks and stuff. And the film down the side of my legs, I, I always took a lot of pride in my gear. Um, I was told very early on, like, this is a time in my life where I had no money. Like, oh, you know, all my clothes were secondhand. I shopped strictly at Value Village on, I think it's the third Thursday of every month. It's 50% off everything in the store. So that's where I bought all my clothes and secondhand shoes and eating, you know, 99 cent TV dinners and 15 cans of tuna a day because I had no money. But I wasn't afraid, afraid to spend $150 on a pair of spandex pants or $250 <laughs> on a pair of boots that I wear twice a month. So I always, I always took that very serious. Um, and, uh, and I always had good gear, I, th I think. The first one was questionable. It fit good. It lasted. I still have it, actually, in, in a bin at my house. Um, I don't really know what I'm keeping it for, but I have a lot of the old stuff. So you can look back on that incredible lettering. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll put it on and cut my grass later today. I don't know. Maybe. Give them a spectacle for the neighbors. Everyone needs some kind of entertainment right now. <laughs> yeah, I'll do what I can. Now, is it true in your 20-plus years of wrestling and being in the business that you've actually never missed a show regardless of broken bones and injuries? Yeah, yeah, I've never, oh. never missed one. Um, the mo I think the, uh, there's two times where I wrestled very, very injured. Um, the most painful one is I had a sep uh, like a separated hip. Um, that was during TNA and I wrestled the latch last match of, of the second day with that, like my hip was back in place, but it was crazy painful. Um, yeah, I and I wrestled with a broken ankle. I actually wrestled dusty roads, uh, with a broken ankle. Uh, and that was at a point where like I needed to wrestle to get paid so I could eat. So, uh, that was very early on team Canada days at, at the fairgrounds and like we were under contract, but everyone there was working, you know, basically you know, check to check basically. And, you know, no one was really making crazy money. And, and, uh, I was new, uh, I was, you know, whatever I was 20, 24 years old and had just started with the company and I was not going to miss my opportunity to wrestle Dusty Rhodes. I mean, he was fat and old and I had a broken ankle, so the match was not good. Uh, but <laughs> I can, I can say that I wrestled Dusty Rhodes. So it's, uh, right. But yeah, I think it's one of my, one of my, my, uh, the feathers in your cap, you never really know, but I, I'm very durable and I'm, I'm available if nothing else. So, uh, yeah, it's something that I, I like, I've missed flights, not because I was hurt or I was sick or I was oh, hung over or anything like that. Like flights get canceled. That's out of my yeah. control, but I've never missed a show from injury ever. That's absolutely incredible. Just the fact that you have that spirit to fight through the pain. I mean, do you just have the high pain tolerance or was it more so necessity? Like you mentioned, like at the end of the day. You needed that that check. Yeah, I, I think it's a combination of, of the two things. You mean like when you're, especially independent wise, like you, you know, you you've been around the independent scene, you've seen it, and you talk to these guys. Like you can't let let one opportunity slide by. That could be the time that 
someone sees you or, or another booker in another place that could put you in front of the right person sees you. So in, uh, back then, especially, you know, early for my early independent days is all, it was all networking. There was no like, you know, oh, I'm going to put this clip up on YouTube and it's going to get 4,000 likes and then promoters are going to start emailing me. That didn't exist. You mean, you just, I would like, I mean, the first time I wrestled out of Ontario, I wrestled for Samu of the head shrinkers. He was on a show uh, that I worked on in Hamilton, Ontario and he saw my match and he's like, man, like, I really like your guys match. Could you come up to Pittsburgh? And I don't, at this time, I don't know how far it is to Pittsburgh. It's like 12, 12 hour drive from Ontario. Uh, yeah, so we're like, yeah, sure. And he, I think he paid us 40 bucks, you know, like it costs more in gas to get there and back yeah. than the money. And just random pit stops and food. You're definitely in the hole. But then again, it's those experiences. You never know who you're going to meet at that show and yeah. what doors can open. So it's the mentality you definitely have to have. Yeah. And I do have a high tolerance of pain. I just... I don't think I knew that going in. Um, I was always a physical person. I played hockey. Uh, rugby was my sport in high school, which is a very, very tough sport, and I loved it. Um, I'm built to take punishment. Like I've never even been in a real fight in my life. I, I think you just don't. I'm pretty agreeable, and you don't choose to fight me. I got a giant head and a giant neck, and pretty hard to knock me unconscious. So it's a bad idea. Well, when it comes to being in the ring, of course, athletic ability and skill set is huge, but it's also persona and just the way you convey yourself. And especially, I remember you coming out with Sanity and you having that vest, always seeing the Canadian flag on. I'm like, yeah, rip out there. Um, but then also another side of it happens to be the tattoos. So I was curious when it comes to that, what is the first one you ever got? Yeah, the, my first one was uh, the Phoenix on my left arm. Um, all of them mean something to me. Um, I was late in the game getting them, definitely. Um, part of that is because, I mean, if you have a tattoo, you know that they're expensive. Um, also, I, I, I have never stopped wrestling. And years ago, it was just kind of considered like the only time you could really get them is if you were hurt or you had time off because – they, you know, they had to have time to heal. So I wrestled on a, I wrestled Tommy Dreamer in the ECW arena, like two days after I had this tat, my, my, uh, my first tattoo, the Phoenix. Um, and it's just about, uh, like, uh, you know, you're, you're born and, and then you die and, and that's it. And it's just about living now and living every day to the fullest, because I believe this is all we have. Um, there could be something else, but, but I don't think anyone can prove to me that there is. So I live, try to live every day. I mean, I've watched a lot of TV over the last week, but uh, <laughs> there's not a lot, not a lot else to do, but it's just kind of like, uh, this is your life. Get busy living it kind of thing. And I've got a little, uh, it's like death is hidden in the flames on my back. And that's uh, to remind me that it's chasing you every day. Uh, yeah. you're one close, one day closer to being dead. We're all going to die. Uh, it's chasing all of us. So that's, uh, don't wait, go after everything. Uh, and I believe I'm sitting here just because I refuse to not be successful in pro wrestling. Uh, I never was like, Oh, I was the best or this, that, and the other. I, I think I'm very good at what I do and I can do a bunch of different things very well. Um, but there's a lot of people that can, but, um, they quit before they get there or they get their chance. So it's, it's a hard business to break into, especially when you're a, a short chubby kid from Florence, Ontario, that doesn't have any connection. So it's a long, long road, but that's what the tattoo is. It's just about the journey. And, and I have change and graffiti underneath my arm. And uh, I believe that's the only constant in life. The only thing that's guaranteed is change. That's actually a really great mentality to have because I feel like even everything's evolving, you never know what's going to be thrown your way and you always have to push through. I mean, even taking this quarantine and this pandemic going on right now, like no one expected it. You have to kind oh. of roll with the punches and take everything yep. day by day. So yeah, yep, I couldn't agree 100%. more on that. Side. Well, on my website, I not only interview wrestlers, but also musicians. So to wrap things up, I was curious if you could have any band write some entrance music for you, who would you love to see do so? Oh geez, so uh, you can't really—you can kind of see it behind me over here. That's my uh, my record collection. There's uh, 767, I think. Now I just got two more this morning. Oh my 767. god! 767. Yeah, I'm crazy into it. Uh, my wife bought me a record player like four years ago as a Christmas present, and it and it blew up into this massive thing. It's I'm not like a collector for money. I'm a collector because I have a very broad music taste and and I love listening to it on vinyl, the way the artist told you to listen to it. You know, they designed it a certain way. There's no skipping. There's no, you just listen to it straight through. And uh, 
vinyl sounds amazing. But yeah, that's uh, so change. You could ask me this in a week and it'd probably change. But uh, one of my favorite bands right now is uh, these guys, Quaker City Nighthawks. They make really cool, like rock blues music. Um, they would be cool. And also there's a, um, a sister band there. They actually live in Nashville and I'm pretty good friends with her husband, Tyler Bryant who is the head man of Tyler Bryan and the Shakedown. But uh, it's these two sisters, and one of them plays slide guitar, and the other one's lead guitar, called Lark and Poe. And they make, like, just rad, rad music. But for to write my music, my theme music that fit me, what I like is theme music, I think I'd pick Local H. It's a band out of, uh, an old, like, 90s band out of uh, Chicago. But they're still putting out music and still touring, and they're amazing. So listen to those bands and re remind that, uh, remember that I was the one that told you to do it. <laughs> I love whenever people throw out new recommendations. I'm like, oh my gosh, I actually haven't heard of those people. So I always, yeah. you know, can dive into it. So no, Lark, awesome. Lark, Lark and Poe and Quaker City Nighthawks for sure. You got to check them out. Unbelievable bands. Awesome. Well, I just want to say thank you so, so much for taking the time to hang out, shoot the breeze on here. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Anytime. I got like 20 years. I got lots to talk about. Everybody, this has been Eric Young. I'm the interview queen, Alicia Toot. Be sure to check out aliciatoot.com for all exclusive interviews and features, and we'll see you next time. Bye.